Good afternoon to you. Mark Sot of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is Wednesday, November 27th, 2019. A little later today, I had a lot of errands to do around town, and boy, traffic in Wilmington today is terrible. Absolutely terrible. It's terrible on a good day. Today it's even worse. You would think that a hurricane or something was coming with how scurried and scatterbrained everybody was being. It's just nuts when there's a hurricane coming and apparently around the holidays. Anyhow, good to be in, and now we can talk tropics a little bit. Nothing going on in the Atlantic Basin over in this area, as you would expect, nor in the eastern Pacific. So our attention is going to focus on Typhoon Kamiri, and hopefully that's how you pronounce that. And uh, this is more than likely going to have a big impact on the Philippines over the next several days, uh, five or six days out. It's going to jog off to the north just a little bit uh, as the ridge to the north weakens some, and then the ridge builds back. Boy, where have we seen that kind of pattern before? Very familiar, isn't it? And then it builds back, and then this goes off to the west, forecast to be the equivalent of a Category 4 tropical cyclone, and <clears throat> this looks like it's going to be headed for the Philippines, like I mentioned, and we're going to really want to watch this closely for a lot of reasons. Um, and, and we'll go over those reasons over the coming days as things become clearer. So here's what it looks like on the vorticity signature uh, down here in the deep tropics. And there's the typhoon right there. Uh, very well-defined uh, vorticity signature. Lots of energy down there. Bundled in the tropics. There you go. You get these rounded uh, bundles of vorticity, whatever. I mean, this is what I look for. This is your classic signature in the tropics when you take that energy, and it's called the conservation of angular momentum with physics and fluid dynamics all thrown in. Very fascinating to be sure, but problems occur, obviously, when you have land masses in the way like this. And unfortunately, this typhoon is not likely to just curve out and miss everybody. There's lots of little islands out here everywhere. Uh, instead, it looks like it's going to go into this area where a lot of people live, and therefore we want to make sure we stay on top of this and uh, keep track of what it's doing over the next several days. Satellite imagery, this is the shortwave infrared. Um, it's starting to curl up and get that look. There's the outflow uh, really starting to get established, and it's got plenty of warm water to work with in the Philippine Sea leading up to the Philippines, and this is destined to become what they call a super typhoon, a very powerful typhoon, probably, you know, it's not going to surprise me if this becomes the equivalent of a Category 5, with a very clear eye, big structure, so forth and so on, a pretty dangerous setup for the Philippines, who are used to such things, but just because you're used to getting beaten in the face doesn't mean you like it, Right? And that's the case for the Philippines. They're, you know, these are common typhoons they, in Typhoon Alley out there, uh, but it doesn't mean that it's easy. And that's the Philippines right here. Here's the typhoon in the European model, ECMWF from today's run. And uh, you know what? I think I can just use the arrow key. Yep. So there it is, 24 hours out. You see that jog to the north, and there's just not much ridging. In fact, the flow up here is generally zonal no trough coming all the way down to grab it, but the steering collapses, then uh, it's back to reality and the ridge builds back over the top. You see that reddish color, deeper orange, whatever, and then it's off to the races, due west track, maybe south of west there, and then it cr cuts across pretty close to Manila, it looks like, and uh, that is around day seven. So between days six and seven, and if you want to broaden it out, five, six, seven, this is going to be heading that way. Tremendous waves will be headed out in front of it towards the eastern side of the Philippines. And then if we take a look at some geography there, there is the uh, Manila up on the southern part of Luzon. And if we zoom in, you know, it's hard to pinpoint exactly where the core of this would go right now. But from the track, it looks like in the model guidance, maybe somewhere through here, uh, is likely. So Manila is a big city. It's on the west side there. Not much development on the east side of the Philippines. you got to wonder, is that because of the typhoons over the eons or what? Yeah, it makes sense because they keep getting hit from the east. 
Uh, but any of these cities out here in from the central Philippines north could be at risk, so we're going to want to watch this closely. Lots of folks live in Manila, so we got your back. Um, and other people, of course, will be tracking this uh, as well. The usual suspects and hurricane chasers, typhoon chasers, so forth and so on, and I will update you on that as needed. So we'll be watching this closely over the next few days as uh, Kamiri comes out of the deep tropics here, turns west and looks like it heads towards Manila or somewhere around there. We'll have to wait and see. It's still several days away. All right, in the lower 48, uh, remember, I am covering more than just tropical weather. Interesting, though, because we do have this tropical wave here that's heading in, I mean, you can clearly see it, uh, over Central America. If it was earlier in the year, like August or September, this might have a chance to develop. But it's not August or September. It's late November, and time is just about up. So instead, not much energy focusing in the deep tropics down here. Instead, all the energy is up here in the northern latitude, storm system after storm system. Boy, I tell you what, look at that. I mean, that's impressive for the lower 48. Unfortunately, impressive in weather usually means that it's um, not very favorable for people uh, or animals. I mean, the weather affects animals too. But people, places, and things, those common nouns, get affected when people like me, a weather geek and a geographer, say, you know, look at that. That's impressive. That's usually a bad sign for those of us underneath those clouds. Big storm system here, blizzard conditions in some areas, uh, windy conditions as well, turbulent weather for anybody flying across in this. Uh, my hat's off to you, almost literally, if you're flying through this junk, because there's going to be some turbulence, and the pilots and everybody else dealing with it, wow, that's a big no from me, as they say. That's a no from me, dog. I'm not doing that. The air traffic controllers, the flight attendants, the ground crews, all of you, you have your work cut out for you yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and for the next several days. Whew, unbelievable. So what do we have? This is really interesting. If you're into weather and you know meteorology, this is really fascinating. All that speckled popcorn look, that is cold air in the atmosphere interacting with what moisture there is, a lot of energy there, snowing to beat the band in some places, feet of snow, thunder snow and probably some of these different storms getting convective, strong winds aloft, a lot of dynamics, you name it, it's there. Wow. And then in the desert southwest, coming up out of Mexico, subtropical jet getting involved. Man, oh man, this is a meteorological hodgepodge as we get into, it's like a a cornucopia, or whatever they call that, just in time for Thanksgiving. A veritable buffet of northern hemisphere weather. Um, you know, and even with the, the typhoon there in the West Pack, there you go. We have pretty much everything. Tropical activity, mid latitude storms galore. Just amazing. Um, weather is absolutely fascinating, but it can be disruptive. And this map really tells that story well. The patchwork quilt of watches and warnings everywhere from Alaska all the way up here. Look at Alaska, winter storm warnings, etc. Uh, even a flood warning over here in Hawaii, uh, on Kauai. I think that's where that is. And um, everything in between. Well, not between Alaska and Hawaii necessarily, but weather-wise, everything in between in the lower 48, the contiguous 48 anyway. Wind, all this is wind. Um, some of these in here, those are blizzard warnings up there uh, in northern Montana. All these pinks in here are winter storm warnings, winter weather ad advisories. Um, and if you ever want to know what these colors are, there's two ways to go about it. little pro tip for you. This is weather.gov. I love it. I use it. Readily available and free. So just go to weather.gov and you get this map. And if you know your geography... And you say, hey, what's going on up there in northwest Montana? Well, just click on it. Just click on it. And you get, you know, a uh, zoomed-in detail. Blizzard conditions. Uh, this nice infographic. And then a breakdown. Civil emergency message. That's never a good sign. And in fact, let's read that as I do this. As of noon, Wednesday, uh, what is that? Pondera County has declared an emergency travel-only order. For Highway 89, heavy snow and blowing snow. Now, look, I'm going to be honest with you. 
as a weather geek, I would love to be there and see that. And we're going to get towards that closer each year, and including coming up, being able to do more things than just track hurricanes and nor'easters. Eventually, I'm going to be at the point with, with our Patreon support that I'm going to be able to cover some of these items, items, these events, high-impact events, even in remote places like northwest Montana. That is really fascinating to me, this ground blizzard conditions, dangerous weather, but not just, quote, chasing it, but understanding it, documenting it, measuring it, all of that. That is what a geographer, at least in my situation, does. By the way, if you do go into geography, there's a lot of different things you can do. You can help plan where the next Chick-fil-A or Walmart or Zaxby's or Target or whatever, even a football stadium. You can help plan where those go. Geographers do planning, urban planning. They have a little bit of climatology, a little bit of meteorology. Um, being a geographer is kind of like being a physician's assistant versus being a meteorologist or a doctor, right? The PA is to a doctor what a geographer is to a degreed meteorologist. It's similar, if that makes sense. I think that's the best analogy I've had all week. So back to my original thought, yes, this is fascinating to me. I think it hopefully is to you as well, but it's also dangerous if you're not prepared. And that is a lot of people out there in the West. You know, it's sparsely populated in some areas, but that's a lot of people that could be impacted um, and look at Arizona over here. Let's change this to red. Um, flash flood watches in southern Arizona. Yikes. Almost all of Utah covered in winter storm warnings. Most of southern Nevada. Uh, we do have a live nest cam out in Pahrump, Nevada. I'll pull that up tomorrow. We'll take a look at what's happening out there. Pahrump is down here on the other side of the Spring Mountains near Las Vegas. Just wow. So what's going to happen? Well, Here's what it looks like in the model world. The GFS, this is the east coast of the U.S. over here. Here's the west coast, Washington, Oregon, California, Baja Peninsula. All right, and here's one storm system today. Here's the upper level system, the low level moisture coming out of Mexico. We put this into motion every, what is this, six hours or so. Look at that out in northwest Arizona, southern Nevada, southwest Utah, Oh, how I would love to be there for that, but just traveling this week. Even if I had a million dollars sitting around, I talked about this yesterday. I think I said something about a hundred million dollars, but whatever. It's a matter of the, the headaches and missing Thanksgiving and all that. I mean, that would be awful to not have Thanksgiving with my family, especially since I've traveled so much this year already. But oh, that just, this right here calls my name because that would be amazing to document that. And to see that kind of snow in the desert and then the higher elevations, the, the flooding that would go on in the dry arroyos, uh, you know, we're, we'll get there. We're going to get there where we can start covering more stuff, even if I'm not the one doing it. Ah, all right, so maybe we'll do that sometime soon. Anyhow, back to the reality at hand. Look at that heavy rain. I'm telling you, you folks in Arizona, pay attention to this. Um, this is 48 hours out, so we're talking Friday morning. This could be rather nasty in parts of Arizona. That could be life-threatening, that much rain, heavy, heavy snow in the higher elevations, cold system in the Rockies, blizzard conditions in parts of Wyoming. Um, you see that movie, The Hateful Eight? A very vulgar movie from Quentin Tarantino, but other than that, the cinematography was incredible. The language, not so much, but, uh, you know, and if you're, uh, anyway, um, it, that's, that's what that, it's, it's a Western, right? It's a, a classic modern day Western, and it was set in Wyoming. And this is the kind of weather that they had to deal with in that movie from Quentin Tarantino, his eighth movie, I believe it was. Nevertheless, that moves out of the plains. See, isn't that interesting how weather and my love of movies sometimes you know, goes together. You think of that movie Dunkirk and the true story behind it and other movies as well. But anyhow, that storm system moves east and then maybe, maybe, maybe by day five, a secondary low along the coast takes shape here just as people are heading back to work after Thanksgiving and all that that implies, lots of wind, coastal cold rain, maybe some snow in eastern Massachusetts, 
GFS 12Z run here having the low ha hangout uh, along the east coast of Massachusetts. And if we zoom in to the northeast and take a look at that, back this up just a little bit, you see uh, by about hour 108 to 114 or so, secondary low pressure there south of Long Island. And these isobars kind of close together in here, so easterly wind coming in, pretty good fetch. So that's something to watch. Not a lot of cold air with this system yet. It, it's weird what the GFS is doing, kind of stalling it out as the negative NAO takes shape, blocking farther, what would you call that, downstream, I guess, over Greenland, prevents this low from just rocketing out. And so it kind of gets stuck here. And this will be something to watch because if it stays stuck longer and the low comes off a little farther to the south and then comes up slowly, we could have a much different scenario for places like Boston, Hartford, um, maybe Long Island down to Philadelphia, but it's hard to say. The GFS 12Z verbatim, if you just take it as it is, wet, cold, maybe some snow there, some wind, I don't know, we'll see. It's it's. It's still a few days out. That's almost a week out right there. So we will watch and see how that all pans out. For now, though, that is enough to get our attention for today and tomorrow. Um, and then, of course, the typhoon in the Westpac. We'll be watching that. All right? So have a great rest of your Wednesday. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. If you're traveling today, tomorrow, Friday, whatever the case may be, for real, be careful, slow down. It's not that you just you know don't want to get a ticket. I don't want you die, die dead, died, whatever. I don't want you died. Um, because if you're not watching the videos, what use is there for me to be here doing this, honestly? So it's in my best interest to keep you alive. And at the end of the day, an alive viewer is much better than the alternative. I think we could all agree with that. So that being said, seriously, have a great Thanksgiving with your friends, family, and so forth. I will be in tomorrow afternoon. I mean, after all, my office is in my house, so it makes it easy. And I am going to do an update. We'll talk about the typhoon. We will also talk about the winter weather over the lower 48 and keep you on top of all of that. All right? Very good. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thank you so much for tuning in from your device, whatever it happens to be. I do appreciate it, and I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.